tuning back in this week. I look forward to sharing a message with you today. I want to start off with two things this week. The first thing is I know that you, if you watched last week, you might be looking forward to hearing a different um, message today, a testimony from Nate at our church. Unfortunately, we were unable to get schedules to line and stuff came up and we weren't able to record that. So stay tuned for it. It is coming soon and things just like that are planned for the future. So it's just going to be me this week. Um, and the second thing is, last week I shared the story of Daniel and the lion's den. And I realized after <laughs> that it was posted that I was saying David instead of Daniel. So I apologize for anyone watching that and thinking that I'm a little crazy. Um, but I do in fact know that it is Daniel and the lion's den, not David. <laughs> and um, But anyway, so I'm looking forward to sharing a message with you today. And today I'm going to be talking about Jonah and the whale. Last week, talking about Daniel and the lion's den, as well as a few back when I talked about the woman at the well, those are all stories that I have heard a lot of times. And I hear, heard them at Vacation Bible School and in children's studies. And it, it meant something to me then, but not what it means for me today. So I know that there are other people out there like that that have heard these many, many of times and just hearing him again, but from a different perspective at a different age brings on a whole nother side of hearing those stories. So I was thinking about other ones like that and one that I heard a lot was Jonah and the Whale. So I went back and reread Jonah and the Whale and just kind of had a different um, take on what I thought while reading through it. And that is, if I'm not going to read the story of Jonah and the Well, but I encourage you to do so. It is a good story, but it's a long one. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of summarize it for us. Jonah and the Well is, Jonah was commanded by God to go speak to um, the Ninevites in Nineveh. And Nineveh was known for um worshiping idols and being very cruel so when jonah received this calling command from god instead of going east to nineveh he went as far west as you can as jonah can imagine he was on a ship and while he was on that ship the ship um a storm god um god started a storm and the people on the ship began to uh, put blame on who is the reason this storm was brought upon them in their ship and the and the fall and the fault fell on Jonah and he was cast off the ship so he was thrown overboard and while being when being thrown overboard he was swallowed by a whale or a big fish and was in the belly of the big fish or whale for three days and three nights in the time of being in the whale for three days and three nights, he spent praying, repenting, um, asking for forgiveness for his sins of running away. And after those three days, three nights, um, God delivered Jonah from the whale and he was spit up on dry land. And that's kind of where the story was left for me when I was in vacation Bible school or in Sunday school. That's kind of where it stopped. And we got to talk about um, what usually it was typically talked about that you can't run from the Lord and and also about the Lord's willingness to forgive Jonah so those were kind of the two big lessons that um, I got out of Jonah and the whale as a child and they are still very important and very valid to that story but I wanted to take a different approach to it um, so while the story usually stops in Vacation Bible School after him being spit up on to dry land, it continues on. And Jonah does, in fact, continue on his journey and go to Nineveh and speak to the people. And they believed him and they repented for their sins. So Jonah's command was to tell them about how they are worshiping idols and that they've been cruel and they've done these things. And God was going to command that. Nineveh fall and be and and be and be destroyed essentially. So 
they believed Jonah and they did repent for their sins. And because they did that and God believed their repentance, they were forgiven and God spared them from destruction. You would think that Jonah would be up, would have been in awe of God and his power, not only his power, but his willingness to forgive those people and spare them from destruction. <clears throat> but instead, because Jonah is an Israelite and he believes that, which Israelites are, they were God's chosen people, that, and the Ninevites were cruel and mean, he wanted and he was disappointed that they did not get destroyed. So he was going to share the message, but he wanted and looked forward to God destroying that um, that country. And that's not what God did. And it was kind of silly for him to think that the same God that delivered him from the stomach of the whale, that God also wouldn't deliver the people of Nineveh. Because God shows mercy, and he shows mercy and gives grace to those and forgives those um, that repent for their sins. So why wouldn't, he re why wouldn't he forgive the people of Nineveh? Because Jonah was disappointed, he sat outside of the city underneath a tree and he pouted. He was so disappointed that that city wasn't destroyed. And because of this, God decided to take the tree that he was sitting under and he shriveled it up. So Jonah was left without shade and suffered in the heat because he was questioning why and disappointed in why God would forgive these people. It was kind of like a way for him to be like, I just delivered you from the whale, the stomach of a whale in the middle of a storm on a ship. I delivered you from this, but you're questioning me. And Jonah was questioning because he was giving in to the thoughts that the world had. So the world is giving him these thoughts to think poorly on God's judgment to forgive and that God wasn't correct in forgiving these people when all along God did forgive the Israelites as well in their time of doubt too. And I think that... Jonah had choices, just like Daniel from last week had choices. Uh, Jonah chose to disobey. He had, re he had his reasons too. He ha heard the plan that God had for him and the plan was too big. So Jonah, instead of embracing it, ran away from it. He chose the world's word, the world's teachings over God's word. And what happened? He got swallowed and um, he got thrown off a ship and swallowed by a whale. And you can also choose to disobey God, to ignore um, and to give into the, into the world for whatever your reasons may be. But the world's going to eat you up like a whale. And that's the take that I want to, that's the approach I want to look at this verse today is the world is going to eat you up like a whale. And the world is going to eat you up and use you only for its benefit. Once you're all dried up, it's going to spit you back out. <clears throat> and, and it won't leave a, gro a drop of grace for you. The world's not going to come back and say, Oh, I'm so sorry for doing that to you. Let me show you love. Let me forgive you. Let me give you grace. The world is not going to do that. People in this world are not going to do that. They're going to let you down. They're going to leave you there. Um, they're too busy. The world's too busy going after Satan's too busy going after anyone else to worry about the pain and the suffering that it's caused you. And it's going to leave you empty and thirsty because the world will not satisfy. And when the world brings, when life brings you to your knees, God is right there. He's wanting to deliver you from the storm, from the whale, from the prison, from the den. He wants to deliver you from that. 
and he's the only way that you're going to he's the only way that you're going the only place the only thing the only outlet that's going to give you the type of grace the type of love the type of reassurance the type of um, peace that you were after the world is not going to give you that you can choose to let the world eat you up you can or you can allow god to change your life i think jonah missed out on the big picture um, in this story he could have sit sat in awe of god's work he could have sat in thankfulness and in praise that god did not only delivered him but he delivered all of those people he could have sat back and, and thought about all the people that he delivered before him, but instead he fed into this, the, what the world uh, wants him to think, what Satan would want him to think and say that these people deserve to be destroyed. These people deserve that because of all they've done. Um, and you should be mad. That's what Satan teaches people. That's what he places in your heart. That's not God's teaching. God is there to give grace to forgive. And he is so willing to do that for his people um, if we repent. Those people that repented that day believed in the same God that delivered Jonah, that delivered Daniel, that delivered Joseph, that will deliver um, all of those people in, this, uh, in the Bible and those stories and people today. God delivered those people, the same God. And he... I feel like he missed out on an opportunity to sit and praise in awe of him. So my encouragement for you this week is to look within. How are the choices that you're making affecting your life? Are you leaning? Are you world leaning? Or are you leaning towards God? Are you looking for deliverance of issues in your life? And who do you look to? Do you look to God or do you look to the world for your answers? Um, and how does that leave you afterwards? And when God calls on you, when he places a calling on your life to use your gifts, your talents, um, to put you somewhere, to lead you somewhere, when he calls upon you, are you running to the world to avoid it? Or are you headed into the task ready, believing in God's word? Are you putting on that armor like we talked about, um, believing in his word, standing firm in it, knowing that his word is your weapon, that your feet are planted ready um, to take on what it is, or are you avoiding it? I encourage you to lean on God this week. Lean into him. Listen to him. If you are looking for deliverance, pray to him. Look to him, and he will. He will deliver you and his all good and perfect things come from him. That's my encourage, encouragement this week is to look within on the choices that you make. Lean on him. Lean to him. Look to him. Um, ask him for guidance to figure out how this works. And if you have questions about it, please don't hesitate to reach out to somebody. We would love to talk with you. And um, I would love to see you here next week. I look forward to sharing a message with you. And I look forward to what's coming in the future for this online ministry. And we'd love to have you at person at Farmdale. So if you're ever free, please join us. We'd love to see you. If not, we'll see you next week. Bye.